So I run the uh, Computer Vision Group. Computer Vision sounds like a strange name. Um, it involves the study of trying to make, I guess in the simplest uh, terms, trying to make machines see. So that's the mathematics behind perception. It's to do with the engineering and the hardware. Taking um, images which you might get, for instance, from normal cameras, which you might uh, have on mobile phones, you might have on robots, security cameras or gaming consoles, and trying to understand the content, um, which means recognizing objects in those scenes, uh, reconstructing the three-dimensional layout, and also understanding the actions of people in uh, those scenes. Malcolm and I are working on a pretty interesting problem, which is recognizing people's actions and activities from videos for applications that, that range from um, human-computer interaction to surveillance to new interactive video games. So videos pose a huge computational challenge because of the enormous amount of data that is available. And so we need very smart algorithms that can pass through all these thousands of hours of video and automatically extract interesting um, hu human actions and different kinds of information that will be useful. So in order to do action recognition, you need to be able to localize where inside the video the action is taking place. And so what we consider um, videos to be 3D volumes of pixels. And um, as you can see, there we're looking for the particularly discriminative parts of actions which characterize um, different actions so that um, the computer will be able to d discriminate between many classes of different actions. So uh, working on the problem of uh, scene understanding where we have to label every uh, pixel in an image like this with an object class label such as door or window or sky. Uh, usually when we work on this problem we only have about 10 or 20 labels. These can be associated with uh, like, like nouns but obviously in real life there's a lot more nouns than 20. So I've been trying to work on scaling up the technology to work with uh, tens of thousands of labels. So in this work, we currently go to uh, 107, which is a, a massive jump still, but we've shown that the work's scalable to, to go to even more labels. And how we do that is we go from what we call a, a flat solver to a cascade tile solver, which is uh, based on a tree. So when we have hundreds of labels, what we can do is group labels together into what we call clusters. So we can have sort of 10 clusters representing hundreds or thousands of labels or 20 clusters and so on and so forth. And this enables us now to reduce the size of a problem from thousands of labels down to the number of clusters. And then we can solve this problem and then we need to expand those clusters into their sort of child clusters or child labels. So we have a hierarchy of, uh, of clusters and labels. So it's interesting, when I started off working in computer vision, um, I really wanted to work on uh, artificial intelligence and um, understanding uh, robots and this sort of thing. What I was led through was a very interesting journey because um, it turned out a lot of the applications were not in areas that I initially uh, anticipated. So some of the uh, early work that I did ended up being spun out into a company that worked on uh, post-production and special effects because they wanted to understand where the camera was in order to insert computer-generated characters. Um, subsequently, we worked with um, Vicon, a local uh, Oxford company, on uh, motion capture of humans. We, worked, um, we work extensively with Sony, um, who uh, are interested in computer vision because they have um, this product called the iToy, which uh, captures uh, video for gaming. And uh, we've just got a product about to launch called the Wonderbook. And now, a brand new experience for PlayStation 3. That has to be seen to be believed. Discover the Book of Spells. Magic made real with Sony. So my project is working on unifying two problems in the scene understanding. These are human pose estimation and segmentation. So what we do is we have a stereo camera which gives us these two images here of a human in the scene. And we run a pose estimation algorithm to get the limb estimates out and a segmentation algorithm to specify which pixels are the human. And 
together with depth information which we get from the camera and a simple uh, patch matching algorithm, we can link up the pose and the segmentation and the depth to combine solutions from all three to help correct mistakes that the different algorithms make. So one potential application of pose estimation and human segmentation is in video games. Uh, my research is funded by Sony and with this uh, eye tie they can get information from regular living rooms to uh, drive their game input. One of the main goals of my thesis is to try to take these algorithms and uh, make them fast enough that they can be run reasonably on video games. So I, I work on tracking, I work on tracking objects and people um, and my research is in collaboration with Sony Computer Entertainment Europe so they're interested in applying this sort of technology for video games um, so potentially this type of research can act as a building block for games. So this is an algorithm which I developed um, and it's for tracking objects but in this case it's for tracking people um, and this has potential applications for games because if you can track a player you can make a video game which responds to how that player moves um, and it becomes like a, a way to control a game without needing to press buttons on a controller, that type of thing. So I've always been interested in the sort of industrial applications of this research and that's why I was interested in doing this collaboration with Sony but also in general, you know, after doing the PhD, it's a qualification which really helps uh, in this sort of industry and it's particularly if you're interested in working abroad or something that requires a visa, having the PhD is really helpful in those situations. So another project that uh, I'm really excited about is um, using computer vision to help the partially sighted. This is a, a collaboration that we're just setting up with uh, people at the uh, John Radcliffe Hospital and um, it's very related actually to also the projects we're doing in robotics. For instance, if you want to have a robot move around the world, recognise things, navigate, understand the three-dimensional structure, all of those technologies can also be used to help the partially sighted. For instance, they might want to be able to find out where doors are, how to get to the exit, are there, are there seats free, how do you get to the bus, what even is the bus number of that bus coming. So. One of the uh, projects we've got is to do with head-mounted glasses, intelligent glasses that will speak to the um, person who's partially sighted and, uh, and assist them in various uh, tasks, even recognising what money they have in their hand. This is a sort of exciting project because it's, uh, it sort of uses some of the technology we're developing for um, gaming or for robotics, but also uh, uh, in a totally new application area. This is the main vehicle of the Intelligent Transportation System project. This is a vehicle we uh, developed in, uh, at the university and at the front uh, there is a board uh, for the steering control that we developed here and at the back you can find a white box to where there is uh, all the electronics for the vehicle control and, uh, and the, motor, uh, the control of the two motor uh, at the back. And at the moment we are driving it to collect a data set of video to analyze and test our computer vision algorithm. But at the end it will drive, it, drive itself and it will use the video collected from the camera at the front. It will collect the video, send it to a server, the server will analyze them and send back the information and the direction for the vehicle to follow. So here what we want to do is that given, a, uh, given the cameras which are mounted on a vehicle, we want to de develop a system which will output me a semantic map or a, over a semantic overhead view of the entire urban region. So here we can, we can see there is a car is moving, uh, moving across the road and has, it has cameras mounted. This is the semantic interpretation of the scene and all the semantic interpretation are being aggregated towards and made this kind of map. And as it, as it drives around, we try to build the map, an overhead view with associated object labels, telling that, OK, there is a car, this is a road, there is a pavement over here, some fence building. So I think the future for computer vision is very exciting because of this um, technological driver, the uh, uh, increasing mobility of computing, the uh, uh, increasing computational power available to us and I hope that uh, Oxford Brooks Vision Group will play uh, uh, a large role in the future of development of this technology.